Hey Ruth, so what do, what do you think of this little city go, Skoda city go? Welcome back to the channel guys, welcome to Cyprus where I've been driving this 2017 Skoda City Go tootling around the island for the past few days. It's a refreshing change to the cars that I normally cover on this channel and this little car has a 1 litre engine with 60 brake horsepower. So if you're thinking of buying one of these little micro machines as a daily driver, it might serve you well to watch this video because I'll talk about the things that I love about the car, the things that I hate about the car and whether you should buy one as your little daily driver or city run around car. The first thing I love is just so simple it's the door openings when you open the door they kind of like come to an automatic stop and I think this is really good when you've got kids in the car opening and closing and it allows the door to sort of be opened without sort of swinging it right open and hitting the car next to it so that is a good little feature perfect for a city car which is going to be parking in tight spaces now it's a pretty standard requirement that a little city car like this should be able to turn around in quite a small turning circle so I'm going to test this out now I'm in the end spot and I'm just turning the wheel is on full lock can we go back to where we were wow back into the same spot I can also test this out in the real world because you can see I'm on one side of the road here wheel on full lock and I will get round to the other side of the road without having to go on the curb or anything like that for the size of the car the boot on this thing is actually more than adequate and is actually bigger than I thought it's not going to be the biggest boot in the world but we've got to remember it is a little city car and you can get you know several large bags of shopping in there without any issues we've been able to pack this boot up with everything that we need to go to a water park without any issues whatsoever now a lot of people buy these cars for the mpg the mpg on this car is superb a full tank will probably get you over 500 miles so in this vehicle right now we've got we've filled the tank and we've still got over half a tank left we've covered 350 kilometers that's with four people in the car at all times so we can definitely see this vehicle getting us to the 500 mile mark, uh, possibly more if we didn't have uh, a car full of people. So if you're looking for a fuel efficient car, this is definitely one to consider. Now the next one could be seen as just a little bit of reassurance, I guess. Um, this car has a great ability to get up steep banks and steep hills with a car full of people. Um, yesterday we took this car to Mount Olympos, which is 1,000, 952 meters high I think it's about five so sorry six and a half thousand feet um, and it, it although it struggled at times it did get there it sort of put itself down it's an automatic gearbox it put itself down into first gear and it did get us there without any real issues at all so if you live in a hilly area and you're worried about the car getting up those hilly banks and streets don't the car will be fine now bear in mind there are four of us in the car this little one liter engine is coping with the demands of the hilly areas quite well especially with three other let's say large passengers <laughs> and for such a cheap car this car is actually really really comfortable we've done probably about three or four two to three hour long journeys and it's as you can see now it's very comfortable for everybody to even fall asleep in obviously apart from the driver um, I don't have any back issues I'm always able to find a nice comfortable position with the seats that I think one of the things that they that I like about these seats is that they are like a fabric material as opposed to a leather and I just find these uh, the fabric seats just that little bit more comfortable than, than the leather seats and yeah these cars are built for city driving around the streets short quick trips but if you did need to take a long journey on it you won't have any issues with comfort they are really little comfortable cars now the roads we have in this little town of Paphos are not great I'm not gonna lie they're not bad but they're not great now they are quite bumpy as you can see I'm going over bumpy road right now and the suspension in the vehicle does a really really good job of keeping everything level keeping everything as comfortable as possible for you so it doesn't really feel like you're being jolted around like a little city car you would probably expect it's a really really comfortable drive and a really nice smooth experience
Now I mentioned earlier that the car is comfortable. It is comfortable, don't get me wrong, but there is one little thing that I just don't like about the interior and it is this area here. Um, they've obviously, it's a, it's a money saving thing to try and sort of minimize the amount of money they have to spend on certain panels, um, plastic interior parts, but they've obviously left this part completely just bare metal and uh, obviously put a paint job on there. And it's the same on the passenger and it's the same on the rears as well. But obviously what you like to do sometimes, you know, if it's a little bit hot, if you've got your windows down, I'm just going to put the window down. There's nowhere really for you to rest your arm in comfort. You have to kind of put your arm out like that and it's really not that comfortable doing that, I'll be honest with you. Um, so you can't put it down there, you wouldn't really be able to get away with that. So if you're looking to try and get uh, a truck as tan, you have to kind of put it out there. You can't, there's nowhere on the inside to rest your arm with the window or, uh, closed. If you're looking to get one of these cars, I would seriously, seriously recommend not buying the automatic gearbox because the automatic gearbox is just really ridiculously slow to change gear in fact. You can put your foot down and sometimes the car will just leave you hanging there for like what feels like five or six seconds but in reality it's probably more like one, two or three seconds and I'm not exaggerating by that either. What you'll be doing is put your foot down. It's not happening now because I'm in a sort of a, a gentle cruise but you'll put your foot down, see you'll be at a junction, you'll put your foot down and nothing will happen. You'll get it, you'll get out of first gear in the second, then when it goes to third, you'll just be like, the car will hang almost like it's gonna stall and just com completely come to a stop. Then it'll kick in and it'll jolt you forward like that. It's really quite a strange little experience, but you wouldn't obviously get that with the manual. So uh, in fact, what I'm gonna do, I've got a bit of open road in front of me. Foot was down and nothing happened there until a good second after. We'll try again. Second. Third. There we go. <laughs> it's just mad. It's just mad. I'd, I'd definitely go for the manual. This is okay because, you know, I'm only going to be having this car for a few more days. But I'd definitely get a manual if I was getting one for long term. So one of the next things that I hate is that because these cars generally are quite low spec, I think the sat nav options, they may not do a sat nav option, uh, or if they do, they're probably quite rare. So you're probably going to need to put your phone um, on a mount to get your sat nav and things like that. Now that's where the problem lies, because obviously there are no vents here. You can't just get one of those vent um, devices where you can plug your phone in. The vents on here are way too small for that. So it means you've probably got to go down the suction route of uh, putting one on the windscreen. Now the problem is though, the windscreen, I've got my arm at full reach here and I'm nowhere near touching the windscreen. It is absolutely miles away for such a little car. Um, so the only option really is to maybe put one at the top here um, and have it right there. There is a vent here, but as you can see, I've, I did buy one of these um, sort of magnetic so I'll just, I'm getting my phone out of the little pocket here. I did buy one of these magnetic little holders and yeah, although you can put it on there, right? It, it's very flappy and when you're driving around, it sort of does move like that. So, and plus when you're driving, you can't really see it because of the steering wheel as well. So you really do need to be thinking about getting a suction one there um, or maybe, you know, putting it right there, but it is going to be quite far away from the, uh, the, the, the dashboard area. And even when you when you consider that your face is going to be set back, it's going to be really, really far away to see. Now because it is such a basic dashboard layout, you don't get a lot of screens, you don't get a lot of information. And what you need to do is you'll see here where it says 28 degrees. That is the current temperature. That is like your multifunction computer right there. So if you see, we've got on the end of this little stalk here, we've got like toggles for up and down. That is basically what you need to press. I'm gonna press it now, you'll see things changing. And you have to really, if you wanna get a certain bit of information like the engine temperature, your speeds, your fuel left in the tank, your average speeds, things like that, then you really, really do need to just keep pressing it and going all the way through the menu system. And it can take a long time to get through everything. So just be aware of that. It's not, it's not the most advanced menu system or car setup. Um, computer trip computer that you'll ever see but it does the job I just like something a little bit more advanced hey Ruth so what do, what do you think of this little city go Skoda city go it's a perfect little city car it's cheap to run it fits a family four with ease and got comfortable space so could you see yourself driving one of these back in the UK if yeah, we got one for you yeah, yeah. nice and cheap 
perfect little run around. It's all you need, isn't it? It is. It's really nice, actually. It is. I would have one. And actually, you know, the positives of this car far outweigh the negatives. I've really enjoyed my time driving this little Skoda City Go for the past week or so in Paphos in Cyprus. Uh, it's been a great little city car. It's, you know, it's never let me down. It's let me get into all sorts of tight parking spaces. It's taken us anywhere we want to. Temperatures have always remained good. Um, it's never struggled up the hills. It's comfortable. Um, what more can I say? It's a cheap, cheerful, comfortable, car that will just do exactly as it's supposed to do so I would definitely recommend this car if you are looking to get one obviously the same can be said for the VW up the Seat Me as well because obviously they are built on the same vehicle um, so if you're thinking about getting any one of those cars then just do it just go for it the great little cars and on that note I'm gonna end the video guys thanks for watching if you are interested in seeing more videos like this on other manufacturers then yeah, uh, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.